Americans. What a privilege, or rather, right, it is that I shall refer to you, my countrymen, with such a moniker. I do so with the utmost pride and respect in each and every one of you for your care, your diligence, and your unending perseverance in our endeavors to establish one union to protect and honor the voices of the people in this, our new country. There is yet much work to be done in the construction of our nation's government, but this road does not present itself in any way as troublesome to me, for the discussions I have held with the gentlemen of this convention have thus far proven their upstanding qualities as men of compromise and of great passion for the duty and responsibility which we all have here assumed. Today, I come before this honorable convention to discuss the issue of the manner of election of members to the Senate. The more radical among us have proposed two suggestions that, on a glance, may present themselves as diametrically opposed, but in light of the union we endeavor to carve from the fresh new stone of this new constitution, are not altogether estranged, and are, or may be, deeply connected, allowing for what I propose as a moderate and equitable solution to unite the two. There are those who would wish for senators to be appointed by the Congress in which they will serve. This is troublesome to our Confederalist compatriots due to the risk of aristocracy in the legislature, and the luring of men to corruption and abuse of power. There are also those who say the election of the senators is one right belonging to the people, and standing with the values that led us to forge this nation. This, as our Articles of Confederation have proven, and our Nationalist brethren would concur, is a dangerous notion, leading only to irresolution and similar abuse of power on what could be an even grander scale. I stand here today to propose what I hope you all will see as a moderate and equitable resolution to these two opinions, that the senators are best elected by those publicly elected representatives of the legislatures of each state. This is likely the most congenial with the public opinion. It is recommended by the double advantage of favoring a select appointment and of giving to the state government such an agency in the formation of the federal government as must secure the authority of the former, and may form a convenient link between the two systems. Through this method of election, we show our support and due respect for the voices of the people, as individuals and their state legislatures, support the necessary check they provide on a strong central government, while also allowing those of a higher degree of intelligence, experience, and responsibility as members of legislatures and public officials to make the final decisions on who is best fit to serve the constituents of any given district. To those who believe the connection between government and public that I promote here is too directly connected to the whims of the people as a whole, I say this. So far as that construction may expose the Union to the possibility of injury from state legislatures, it is an evil. But it is an evil which could not have been avoided without excluding the states and their political capacities, wholly from a place in the organization of the national government. If this had been done, it would doubtless have been interpreted into an entire dereliction of the federal principle, and would certainly deprive the state governments of that absolute safeguard which they will enjoy under this provision. I humbly thank you all for your time and attention. Good day.